Hey guys, welcome back to this lecture series. This is lecture two, part two. Um, if you haven't watched part one yet, you definitely don't wanna miss it. Go down to the description box and click that link takes you back to the lecture uh, before this one, so definitely don't miss out on that. Part two of lecture two is going to focus on different types of diets in the realm of low carb and high carb diets in different amounts of protein. Um, I'm also gonna be diving into some literature, some systematic reviews, and breaking that down in a way that gives you guys a direct answer. Being me, it's super frustrating seeing all these research articles pointing your finger this way, pointing your finger that way. This works, that doesn't work. What's the answer? I took all of the bullshit out of that and I provided you guys with the best content possible and gave it a realistic type application approach. So I hope you guys can appreciate that. I hope you can find it useful and I hope you guys enjoy this lecture. So moving on to protein and low carbohydrate diets. Um, a super big question that I have is does body weight reduction depend more on the carb or protein component of a diet? Typically low carb diets are paired with a high level of protein. So really what is contributing to the most body weight reduction here? And what about lean body mass? What about muscle mass? Um, just because you're losing body weight doesn't mean you're losing body fat. So a study, relatively high protein or low carb, energy restricted diets for body weight loss and body weight maintenance. So again, this group was looking at 132 overweight or obese subjects. Um, they were 170 to 400 pounds in the age range of 23 to 71. This was a one year diet. So the first three months was a 67% calorie reduction and the last nine months were a 33% calorie reduction. So a really rapid approach to fat loss followed by a less um, rapid approach. So there was four different groups, a high protein normal diet, carbohydrate diet, um, a high protein normal carb diet, high protein low carb diet, a normal protein normal carb diet, and a normal protein low carb diet. Um, protein intake was the same in, in the high protein groups, 1.1 grams per kilogram, and the low protein groups were 0.7 grams per kilogram. So on social media now, you're seeing everybody plug, hey, eat a gram per pound of protein. So this is 1.1 gram per kilogram, which is about 0.6 grams per pound. So if I weigh 150, I'm probably consuming around 80 to 85 grams of protein to put that into perspective for you guys. So the results from this was when protein intake is the same, the low carb and high carb amounts do really, they really don't matter. They both resulted in fat loss. I mean, it looks like the high protein normal carb diet group lost 22 pounds of fat, but the p value showed no significant difference in the results. I think a big point from this paper that I want to point out a higher protein diet will allow you to retain your lean body mass, it will allow you to retain your muscle um, a lot better and have most of the weight lost be primarily body fat, and that's what we want in a diet. Um, but just because there's these four different comparisons doesn't make one better than all of the others. You know, they're still losing body fat over a period of time, which is the goal of entering a fat loss phase. So back to the big question, guys, what makes a fat loss diet work? Paleo, keto, low carb, high protein, um, it's a calorie deficit, and if you're wanting to preserve your lean mass and you're a lean individual trying to get leaner, I would recommend having a higher protein diet. And what does this mean, calorie deficit? Burning more calories than you are consuming. Again, I keep plugging that because it's so important to understand. So that's what makes a diet work, but what makes a diet effective? Um, one that you will follow enjoy and really be able to sustain long term. So once that diet is over, are you able to kind of live life back to regular calories without going back to what you used to be? Because if you go on a diet and lose a bunch of body weight, body fat, and you go back to what you used to be doing, chances are you're going to end up right in the same spot where you started. Having a bunch of body fat, unhappy, and going on another journey maybe another journey of trying to lose body fat. So here, main takeaway, 
What makes a diet work? Calorie deficit. And what makes a diet effective? Something that you will follow, enjoy, and sustain. So I hope you guys liked this um, lecture. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys in the next lecture. So thank you guys again so much for tuning in to lecture two, part two. Um, be on the lookout for lecture three as it's going to be a big one. For this lecture, I really do want to dive into a very special topic, but I'm not going to reveal it yet. So you guys have to pay attention. Hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss out on lecture three. Just trying to be a helpful and reliable resource in this fitness space, right? That's why I'm doing this is to ultimately help you and provide you with reliable content in a way that can be applied to your own life. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you guys in the next video.